Welcome to Sunday evening at Dunseverick Baptist Church. You join us as part of our missionary weekend. We've already enjoyed ministry on Friday night online and tonight you are going to be joined by Nigel Kizik, who's going to speak about the gospel mission of South America as well as bring the gospel to us. So as we begin our service, let us worship the Lord, whether in English or indeed in Spanish, as they would use in South America. Let us now praise God in the words of our opening hymn. singing and uh, we come now to unite our hearts in prayer and then I'll do an introduction about the ministry that you're going to hear represented tonight but firstly let's pray and seek God's blessing upon our time together this Sunday evening. Dear Lord we thank you for your word, your word that reminds us of the love of Jesus to all mankind whether that be here in Northern Ireland, indeed up on the north coast at Dunseverick, or wherever our friends are watching on from in their own homes. Lord, we pray that you bless this online ministry tonight and that there will be those, Lord, who don't know you as their own and personal saviour and tonight will be that occasion when they place their trust in Jesus. And others, Lord, who are saved and walking with thee, Lord, and desiring to go deeper and to go on and to go through with Jesus upon hearing the missionary challenge tonight. Lord, whether it be South America that they're going to hear about, or Africa or India, wherever it might be, even on their own doorstep, that they would feel the call of God upon their heart to serve him. So, Lord, bless this meeting tonight. Bless those who are sick, those who are infirm, Give protection in our community and in our church against coronavirus and its spread at this time. And we pray, Lord, for our nation. Lord Jesus, that you give wisdom to those in government 
As they make decisions that are easily criticized, but Lord, need to be taken all the same. So just bless our time together tonight, and may all that is said and done be to the honor and glory of our wonderful Savior, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross and gave us life to ransom our souls. Amen. Friends, I want to deal with the announcements briefly again. A warm word of welcome to you there as you watch this service online. May the Lord bless you and I really thank you for taking the time to join us tonight at Dunsavrick Baptist. This particular weekend has been a missionary weekend that has been different from all others that have preceded it because a fair part of it has been virtual or online. We haven't been able to gather as a church per se and have the missionaries come and actually physically present their ministry and their work here. So I want to thank all the missionaries and the mission directors who have taken the time to send in videos or have allowed me to go to their own homes or places of employment there and video them there. Thank you for sharing with us and we pray that over this weekend it began on Friday night with a family Friends there in, in cancer, a ministry in Bellamina that uh, works amongst those who have had a diagnosis of cancer, both to individuals and to their families. And uh, you can see that on Friday night on YouTube page uh, that took place. On Monday night, tomorrow night then, uh, we go to Baptist Missions. Baptist Missions in Ireland that are part of our Association of Baptist Churches. And you're going to hear about Peru, France, Spain, and indeed South Armagh here in Northern Ireland where the work goes on there. And then on Tuesday night, we're off to India. We get our tickets and our flight booked and we're off to India uh, to hear about the work of United Grace Mission via Pastor Kennedy and Bellamina. So we didn't have to go as far as, as India itself to hear about that work. But I encourage you to join us. And for any who might be interested, I never make any announcements about finance, but all of the money this weekend, all of the offerings go in their entirety towards those missions who have taken part in our missionary weekend. We don't take anything from it in its entirety. It goes to these particular ministries. With regards then, our meetings in Dunseverick, do remember Tuesday night, and Tuesday night we'll be part of that missionary meeting, so we'll be hearing more about that work in India, as well as a time of prayer. That will be online at 8, so it will, as well as those who will be in the church here. Uh, then also our ladies, uh, ladies do remember, uh, our Baptist Women's Fellowship, well you have a special testimony evening on Wednesday night. And you link in again to your YouTube page. You'll find the link on Facebook. So you will. And then into the YouTube page. And you will really enjoy the testimony. I have already had a, a peak preview you might say. Via my wife. Um, and it's tremendous testimony ladies. And I hope and pray that you're blessed through that. Then next Lord's Day. We're back to our drive-in services here. In the church car park. Want to thank all those who attended both morning at 11 and in the afternoon at 5 p.m. Thank you so much for coming out, supporting the work of God and the word of God. And we hope that you were blessed through that ministry and Nigel who preached here all day and now he's coming uh, online. So he is as well to speak about the work in South America. So friends, it's now over to Nigel Kissick. And I thank Nigel for taking the time. But just a few facts about the Gospel Mission of South America. There you see some information. The work in uh, Argentina, in Uruguay and in Chile. And this picture is of a particular work that Nigel himself will mention. It's at the Caramel Church. Carmelo Church. And they're doing a great outreach. So they are. And they are seeing many souls saved at this time. So thank you for joining us. And uh, now over to Nigel, and you're going to see Nigel actually in Bali Baptist, where the video was uh, taped there of him. So over to Nigel. Thank you, and may the Lord bless. Well, folks, good evening to you from uh, to all of you from Dun to in Dunseverick Baptist Church. My name is Nigel Kissick, and uh, on this Sunday evening, well, I'm here to represent the work of Gospel Mission of South America. Maybe for many of you as you tune in tonight, you have never heard of this work. Our work is primarily based in South America, in the, in the southern cone of South America, of Chile, Argentina and Uruguay. 
uh, countries of tremendous need, predominantly countries that, that come from Roman Catholic backgrounds. And yet within that, a variety of different faiths and religions there, but yet the reality is that whether they come from Roman Catholic faith or other religions, the reality is the need is the exact same as the need is here in our own province of Northern Ireland. Thank you indeed for tuning in tonight. Thank you for taking the time. And I'm sure as you will tune in to other nights as well, we're very grateful to you. And I'm sure Pastor Billy also will be delighted that you have tuned in to watch online concerning this missionary weekend. Our headquarters is based in a place called Fort, Fort Lauderdale, just about 40 minutes north of Miami, to which where our, our direct general director and, and office staff are based there. And then really for myself and my wife, Karis, we're based here in Northern Ireland. And, and our responsibility within Ireland, Northern Ireland and the South of Ireland and the UK is to represent gospel mission of, GM, uh, gospel mission of South America, GMSA, throughout the province, throughout the UK and Ireland. And our role is around churches and informing them and primarily really stimulating interest for prayer, encouraging folks to stand with our missionaries. Uh, that is our primary goal. That is our primary purpose in making this work known so that folks might pray more. And maybe as you do tune in over this uh, weekend of meetings and uh, our prayer would be that maybe even, maybe not even so much for ourselves as GMSA folk, but even for other missionary representatives and other organizations that you will hear of, over these next few days uh, that you will be blessed and encouraged but most of all that you would even stand with them and I would also go as far as saying if you are standing with the missionaries pray for them and encourage them send a wee email or send a wee letter just let them know that they're not forgotten well GMSA as I say based in South America just like here in our province is struggling with lockdown uh, it's been, in fact, it's become it's very quite severe for them out there. Whether it be in the very north of Chile, in a place called Antofagasta, David and Christy Flink, along with the Perrys, are serving the Lord there in a, in a new church plant. Thank the Lord that they had been where they had been meeting. They were they outgrew their situation. They outgrew their location, which was their living room, just on their bottom floor of their house. GMSA bought a piece of property there, a house, and then they, the believers met in their living room. They removed the sofa on a Saturday night, brought in the chairs, and it went from 50 to 70. And then they had an extended little property, put a, put an extra few feet onto it, uh, a little annex type of thing on the side of the house. And uh, they outgrew that. And then they realized that as a church, they had been praying that God would provide a property, whether it was a greenfield site or whether it was a... Uh, an existing building and uh, we really do rejoice that God wonderfully provided an old like an old type of an old warehouse which was like two three stories the bottom story would become the main sanctuary uh, it needs a bit of work done to it and then the second floor and third floor would become uh, on along the lines of Sunday school rooms and so forth and possibly in time would become what, what many would call like a manse or a rectory uh, somewhere where for a future pastor could be cut, make his home on that property on the top floor but sadly, because of lockdown, although they have purchased the property and although they've got the keys to the property, the, people, the believers themselves will not be able to meet together in that property. So maybe you'll pray that during the, after this all this lockdown, that as the believers will come together, that they will rejoice. And as they have been rejoicing in God's goodness and provision, but most of all, that they, this will become a place where many, many more believers will be encouraged, edified and built up and many of unsaved folk who come along, even what people may be walking up the street, will come and hear the gospel and hear the good news that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. That is primarily the purpose of GMSA. Our purpose is evangelizing. Our purpose is endeavoring to reach out into the world and endeavor to planting churches in South America. That's what it's all about, Bible-believing churches, churches where people can be firmly grounded in the word of God. That is what GMSA is all about. But with, tied within that is this proclamation of the gospel, making Christ known. Wonder tonight, do you know him? Wonder this evening as you sit in your home, have you ever trusted him as your saviour? Have you ever obeyed the gospel? Because it's, it's our desire, it's our longing. I know it is from Dunseverick Baptists as they do the little drive-in on a Sunday and, and for all their gospel services on a Sunday evening. I know, it's, I know it's their desire that you would come to saving faith in Christ Jesus. It's not enough to know about him. But it's very important to know him personally and thank God the way you can know the Father is through the Son because that's what Jesus said. I am the way, the truth and the life and no man cometh unto the Father but by me. Let me take you a 30 hour drive south of Antofagasca to a little village called Likan Ray. 
uh, right sitting in the, uh, not in the very south of Chile, but pretty far down, but still a long way to go before you reach this, the southern coast. And there, there's a little camp centre there that God wonderfully provided. And there were Dan and Liz Thompson presently, our, our camp directors. And it's there where uh, we, my, I had the privilege of joining along with uh, two pastors last year from Northern Ireland, Pastor Ian Wilson, who's in Rathraden Baptist, and also the Reverend Paul Atchison, who's in Newton Arch Congregational, who would go to meet and preach and speak to our missionary body. When we were there, their wives had travelled with us, uh, Sharon and Marcella, uh, and while them ladies were there, they, they, they caught a, bit, a vision and a, a, of what they, they felt they could do to help our camp centre out there. And so our camp centres are really built of like little wooden cabins, uh, what I would just simply call glorified garden sheds. And that's where our missionaries will stay during a uh, conference. That's where the campers will stay during their camp period because that's really what our camp centre is all about. It's about bringing folks to the centre and having a, an intense week together where there's Bible teaching, where the gospel is preached and where, where much fun is had. And, uh, but Sharon and Marcella came home with this uh, desire in their hearts that they would speak to their ladies and speak to their children and endeavor to try and raise some funds to try and build a cabin, a little cabin that we would call the UK cabin, especially for maybe a few UK missionaries go across or UK workers go across somewhere to stay, but that this cabin could be used then for everybody who would come to the center. Uh, it's been miraculous just how God has been wonderfully providing and this this how, how we're seeing this fulfilling and God willing, we're hoping at the end of this year to send out funds that will build a, a cabin specifically had has been provided for by you by uk folk folk from our very own province here and and, and throughout our throughout our island and uh, we're really grateful to god for his provision the, the camp ministry is something that just doesn't happen in the south of chile it happens up in santiago in the capital and go across to argentina and uh, bordering this the, the 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 next country across you'll find another camp center there called chivalacoy where I had, the priv- I had the privilege of being a couple of occasions and we took a work team there just last year. Uh, I'm saying last year, I'm, I'm nearly getting mixed in what year it is because of this whole COVID situation. I don't know what year, but we're, we, it was uh, back 2019. And uh, we were really grateful for the team that God sent out with us and the practical help we were able to give there. Uh, again, the COVID situation is a difficult thing. There's a church plant there in Chivalacoy. Uh, they've now got a national pastor where once we, ha- we had an American missionary there as a pastor. Uh, he, uh, he felt that God, his time there, God was, in fact, our GM, he's now our GMSA director, Tom Gibbons, Pastor Tom Gibbons. He had been there for 18 years and had saw a little church planted and then seen it grown. And now they're sustaining and providing for their own, the mission, local believers are providing for their own pastor who's actually from Santiago, Chile. But we're grateful for the way that God has been pleased to bless that little meeting house and how that again, another warehouse that was bought, converted and, uh, and, and being used now for a completely different purpose than it initially set out for. You know, folks, in many ways, that's what conversion is all about. You take an old building and you convert it. It was an old building that was derelict and rubbish and uh, uh, of not much use. Walls, uh, ceilings falling down, needing rewiring. Maybe floors need late relaid, new doors, everything else. Many of you, if any of you know anything about, about building conversions, you'll know what that all means. Well, the wonderful thing is, you know, that's exactly what conversion means. God replacing the old, not just replacing the old, God making the old new. Uh, he's taking away the old and giving a new new direction, new leading, a new 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 purpose in life. And that's primarily why we, what the gospel is all about. It's about giving you a new direction. And that direction can only be found in Christ Jesus. Let me then jump, jump across over into Uruguay. Again, another country, although not a vastly big country, and although they have been very much involved in lockdown, of all the countries in South America, they have been the least affected with COVID-19. And yet they've had restrictions and the limitations. But yet the wonderful thing is God is wonderfully working. I could tell you about the little, a new plant in Carmelo, where the protos and the valets are involved there and have wonderfully got us wonderfully provided another old building that they're endeavoring to convert. You'll think that's all we do is just convert old buildings. But the reality is that we are God wonderfully provides even old things and, and brings them for a new purpose. And uh, and so the believers will meet there and will be encouraged and will be fed and will be blessed. 
Uh, let me tell you also about uh, uh, Sir Gil Andrea Duarte, who are who are the, the what we would call a Bible College directors uh, of Phoebe out there in, in uh, Uruguay, and the, along with her family, and uh, how that God is using them to train young men for the ministry, young women for Christian work as well, and uh, whether it be these young men, because sadly within South America there's a tremendous dearth of pastors. A tremendous dearth of young men that will be able to step up to the plate and will be able to be young men of the future that will pastor and lead assembly, church church meetings, churches for the glory and honour of God. And so we're grateful for Bible colleges such as this in Uruguay, such as one just in, in uh, such as also in uh, Santiago, I'd say Chile, and also in Argentina. Uh, folks, the need is tremendously great, tremendously great. In fact, the Bible tells us that men love darkness rather than light. And I could, if you had the privilege of traveling with me, and sadly I have no pictures for you, we're limited this, this evening uh, for showing pictures, and I'm not most, maybe the most technical of all people, uh, but I could show you pictures that were on occasions where we walk through and there's there's little, little memorials at the side of the road where crosses where people have died. And I'm conscious that here are people, and they come back and they put flowers and they... They say prayers and they leave gifts as they would pray for their dead. And yet the reality is that one came who said he was the resurrection of life. And, uh, and if he said, if you believe in me, you shall not die, but ye, but ye shall live. And so it is our prayer that men and women in South America would come to know him who is the resurrection and the life. Let me ask you to again, very personally, as you sit in your own home, you might be in your favorite chair, you might be on the kitchen table. I don't know where you are as you watch this little, this, this short little video. But what I am going to say to you very simply this evening is, listen, do you know him who came to give life? And we would long that you would come to know him. Thank you indeed for taking the opportunity just to, to tune in tonight. Uh, it's a very brief overview of our work. Uh, the workers, will it be uh, in Chile, Argentina, Uruguay, all that, if you know the Lord, they, they need your prayers. If you'd like to know more about our work, you can go onto our webpage, gmsa.org. That's gmsa.org. And, and there you'll find a lot more information about what our missionaries are doing and what our work, what the work is all about. But primarily our work is about planting churches in South America. Mr. Strong, who was... Uh, one of the uh, one of, really the, the founder of our work. Uh, it was him who, to whom God put this work, the, the South America, on his heart. And when as he went out, just as him as a, his wife and family, as he set sail uh, away back in 1928, little did he realize that nearly nearly, or sorry, 1923, nearly a hundred years later, how that that work would grow and prosper, not because of him, but because of God was in the work. And at the end of the day, folks, it's not about us. It's not about us at all. It's about the fact that God can use us to reach others for the sake of the gospel. And so thank you for tuning in tonight. Thank you for listening. And I hope it gives you, although it's a very brief overview, I hope it just helps you to understand our work a little better. And may the Lord bless you and may the Lord encourage your heart. Thank you very much. God bless. Thank you, Nigel, for that word about the work in South America. And it's very, very interesting that the work of Baptist missions in Ireland began in Tacna and has a link with Tacna. And that's where that actual ministry that Nigel represents commenced as well. At that time, Tacna was part of Chile in 1923 through to 29, and then become part of Peru, where really Baptist Missions has, you might as well say, it's HQ today. So there's a real link between that mission and the one represented by our Association of Baptist Churches in Ireland. You know, as Nigel was speaking there and relating to us about the work of God in South America, in Argentina, in Chile and in Uruguay, I was thinking about that wonderful verse in Scripture John 3 16 and I think Nigel for his word and I just conclude with this thought for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Whether it is Buenos Aires in Argentina, 
whether it is Montevideo in Uruguay, whether it is Santiago in Chile, or whether it is Belfast in Northern Ireland or Dunseverick, where you join me from tonight, the gospel message is the same. And friends, for God so loved the world. Well, that is heaven's brightest beam. What a message it is to a lost world. For God so loved the world. That's the very source of our salvation and the scope of it. That's about heaven's brightest beam. But earth's greatest thing then. Well, that God gave his only begotten son, the Lord Jesus Christ. He sent him into this world to save you and to save me. That's the immensity of God's love, so it is, that he sent his only begotten son. Oh, what a saviour we have tonight. And not only heaven's brightest being, earth's greatest thing, God's simplest scheme. How is it that we come to faith in the Lord? Whosoever believeth in him should not perish. Oh, what a message that is. It's simply to turn from sin and trust in Christ as your own and personal saviour tonight. And finally, life's greatest thing there, but have everlasting life. I wonder, have you assurance of your salvation tonight? That's what missionary work's about. Going out and proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ, that Jesus alone saves whether in Argentina, in Uruguay, in Chile, or here tonight in Dunseverick, may it be that you trust in Christ as your Saviour. Friends, as we conclude our service tonight, we're going to finish with a word of prayer and then have our closing hymn. So let's unite our hearts in prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you for this special meeting tonight with a missionary theme. And our brother Nigel, as he has represented the ministry that's a passion to his heart, that ministry, Lord, in South America, the gospel mission to South America. Lord, we thank you for the missionaries mentioned and the work that's ongoing there. Bless it tonight. Bless the word to our own hearts, Lord Jesus. For John 3 and 16 is for everyone throughout the world, including those watching this meeting tonight via the online medium. So, Lord, bless us and take care of us throughout this incoming week and be with our loved ones Lord and have your hand upon us and most of all for those who know you not may you even save them where they are tonight close us in with thy blessing in Jesus name Amen thank you for joining us and may the Lord continue to bless you and now our final hymn Amen and good night